Okay, now we got the shortest remaining time next, or the shortest remaining time first, whatever you call it. These are the preemptive versions of shortest job first. Uh, we saw a situation when we have uh, we have a common effect in the SGF as well. When we have some process, which is say for example at zero time, a process came which has a ten units of uh, execution uh, burst uh, time, and at the one you now it comes uh, which has a, just a very short job. But you have no choice but to load the P0, not the P1, because P0 has came first, right? So in such situations, we can preempt the P0 if we have the provision, uh, like in the shortest remaining time, because it's a preemptive one. It doesn't mean that you have uh, loaded some, some process that uh, it can go for its completion, no. Uh, we just chuck at a P1. If P1, uh, some process come, which has the, say, for example, here, uh, you execute the P0, start uh, giving the P0 the processor, and after one unit time, the nine units are left, and uh, you chuck with, with the P1. The EVP1 has only one unit. So that's what to say, shortest remaining time next. The, it doesn't, its remaining time is nine, and its remaining time is one. So better is to go for P1. So we preempt P0, we load P1, okay? Let's give a proper example to understand this. Let us see, this is an example. This is arrival time, this is the processing time, okay? Uh, at zero time, we have the P1 only, so there is uh, no chance but to load the P1. But in shortest job first, you have no chance but to run it for the five units of time because, uh, you know, um, th that was non-preemptive. But here, uh, at one unit of time, no, the next process came, so we just chuck that at one, uh, which is, uh, because at one, P1, P1 has executed its one unit of time, so four is left, okay? And we chuck it uh, with the process P2, which has came at time one. So it, it is two, the two is shortest. So shortest remaining time is with the P2, not with the P1. So we preempt P1, we load the P2 for its uh, one unit of time, which I uh, see, because after uh, two unit of time, there is again uh, the P3, which comes in. Uh, P4 has not yet come, so we will not talk with them. P3 has come, so what will happen here is at P3, we see its uh, remaining time is five, and it has done one unit of time, so the remaining time is one. So we carry on with the P2, uh, so two units of time, uh, so up to the three. Then um, after that, at three, P4 has come, which has a three units of time left. P1, uh, we have a P1 has four, un four units, and P2 is done. This is completed, okay? Now P3 is having a five unit of time, and P4 is having a three unit of time. Now, uh, after this, uh, everybody has come. When the time and everybody has come, after that, it, it is simply as SJF, shortest job first, because we'll see out of these three, which is the shortest one. And I'm seeing P4 is the shortest, so we're gonna load P4, and we're not gonna uh, you know, preempt it now because uh, other uh, jobs are uh, bigger than this, so we have to complete the P4. Uh, so P4 will complete the three units time, three plus three is six units time here, and then after that will be the P1, which is now four units of time, so up to 10, and then the your P3, which is having a five units of time, so up to 15, now will be P3, okay? So what will happen by this is <coughs> the bigger job up front cannot hog the CPU, uh, so Conway effect is uh, actually gone, uh, because uh, you can preempt that and load the shortest one. So what is happen what we are saying is, that we have a convoy now going on. This is a convoy going on. And we have a bike on this side, which can cross. Uh, we simply, when the convoy is, when the bike comes in, we stop the convoy, we say bike, you go, and then carry on with the convoy. Okay, so by that convoy effect is uh, taken off. So what will be the turnaround time and the average turnaround time, average building time, it will be, you know, improved over the shortest job first. You just see in the, this thing as, as your shortest job and then ca compare with this guy, which we'll calculate now. So let me do it. This is my, this is the process. P1, P2, P3, P4, and it's the arrival time, zero, one, two, and three. Then burst time or processing time is five, two, five and three now what will be turn around time td uh, this is the previous table which is above now we're going to turn our time and we've got the waiting time okay 
So what do we throw in time of the process P1? That is, uh, P, where is P1 uh, in the Gantt chart uh, finished? It's here, right? So you have to see that it is the finish time is 10, and when it came at zero, so 10 minus zero, that is going to be 10, okay, for this P1. What about P2? P2 is finished at three units of time, and it has came at one unit of time, so three minus one, that is two. Uh, what about P3? P3 is finished at 15, so that means 15, and it has came at unit two, that is how much? 13. What about P4? P4 has come at, uh, came at unit uh, time three, and it's finished at six. So six minus three, that is gonna be three. Okay, what about waiting times now? If you see waiting time, uh, okay. Uh, so what is the waiting time of this? Uh, because turn time is 10, and burst length is five. So 10 minus five, that is gonna be five. What about the P2? P2 came at one, okay, and it is uh, finished at two. So, so what is gonna be waiting time of this? Because it's finished at two, and burst unit is two, that is zero. It doesn't have to wait anything, okay? And uh, P3, uh, for the P3 turn down time is 13, and burst length is five. So that's going to be 8. So it has waited for 8 units of time. Then P4 uh, is finished at 3. And it's burst into 3. Then it doesn't wait anything. So that's the improvement here. So what is going to be the average wait time and average um, turnaround time? So average, if you say average turnaround time, that is going to be 10 plus 2 plus 13 plus 3 divided by 4, that's going to be 7. And average uh, wait time, that is going to be 5 plus 0 plus 8 plus 0 divided by 4 equals to 3.25, maybe they are in the milliseconds. Okay. Now you take the same example and do the SJF on it and compare the average turnout time and average uh, wait time and you'll come to know the difference. This is another example. Let's just see process P1, P2, P3, P4 and arrival time is 0, 1, 2, 3. The first guy is an 8 unit of time. So but at 1, the 4 came in. So 4 units of time is left. So you have to load the P2. And this guy will have a four times left, okay? And you start executing P4, but at the two, uh, nine comes in. So you will definitely not load it. So you definitely complete the P2. So full four of time. So that means up to the five, okay? Uh, even at three, when you add, are at three, then uh, the, f the process with the five burst uh, length will be lesser, greater than this. So you will continue with the P2 and completed uh, fully. P2 is fully completed at P5, at five units of time. Uh, now everybody has come, okay? So this is done, four, nine, five. After that, it will be just simply the SJF. Which one is shortest? This one is short, so load the um, P1. After this, okay, let me see. Uh, sorry, it's not uh, four units of time. It is the, uh, how much? It is seven units of time. So P4 will be shortest, so P, you load the P4. Uh, give it a five unit of time, five up to ten. Then definitely P1, which is seven units left, so ten plus seven, seventeen, and then nine units of this guy. Okay, and average wait time will be thirteen point zero, and we know how to calculate it. So your job is to calculate the turnaround time and the average turnaround time. Do it. Now we see uh, the shortest remaining time next, but there, there are some problems, and problems remain. Uh, same uh, that, that problems which are with the SJF uh, shorter job first. What happens is, say for example, we got a at zero time the process ten comes in. Okay, now uh, at process one, say a job with the process uh, burst time of one comes in. So what you'll do after the point of time, you will start loading the P zero, but after that uh, you will uh, load the P one and preempt the P zero because you will say, okay, we'll load it. Uh, 
later on when we finish the P1. Maybe in the meantime, the P2 comes in, which has again the burst time 1. So it is the 9 left, okay, uh, with the P0. Now what about the P3? If, say, for example, P3 comes in at some uh, unit time third, which has, say, 7. P4 comes in um, at time 4, which has, say, 8. Uh, or maybe there will be processes comes, coming on, which are all maybe lesser than the P0. What will happen with the P0 process? Okay, simply it will starve. So this is uh, the main problem uh, of starvation uh, with the with the uh, shortest remaining time next because you are preempting P0. Uh, this will not uh, this will not be the problem with the SJF because you are doing what you are executing the P0 no matter what. Then after that you will uh, execute P1. But if uh, what will happen is if say uh, all processes comes in and uh, you start executing some process and then later on. Uh, shorter shorter processes uh, start coming more and more often, so it will starve the uh, process with the uh, bigger burst. Okay, so starvation with SGF is also there, and star starvation with the shortest remaining time is quite obvious here. Okay, this is the first one problem. You can uh, figure out that. Okay, uh, maybe you will increase the priority later on. We have uh, other algorithms. Maybe you say, okay, if P0 is waiting too much, we will increase its priority when we say priority driven. Uh, scheduling and maybe fix it but the problem with the these kind of algorithms is that we estimate uh, the the burst length okay uh, this is not the exact okay uh, it, it is best because we have uh, the minimum uh, average waiting time average waiting time is you know drastically reduced uh, in the in the in the shortest waiting time next but um, we never know. That's the next problem. We never know the, the burst length, exact burst length. Okay, we can only uh, actually we guess on the burst length because we can't predict the future, right? So practically speaking, uh, these SJF or SR, uh, SRTN um, seems to be impractical. Okay, uh, so we can have a better algorithm than this, and that we will discuss in our next video. Okay. So stay tuned until then and stay smiling.